Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And today I'm in the laser lab and I've got my Algo Laser hat on. <laughs> I ran into Jill, the head of support for Algo Laser in Illinois at the Lightburn Convention, and he gave me this really nice stitched hat. I mean, really nice hat. Uh, I love it. So we're going to be testing out the Algo Laser Delta 22 watt today. And, you know, I've sort of made a promise to myself that I'm not going to do any more review videos unless it's something new and different and what's new and different about this laser is uh, a couple things but the main thing is the touch screen on it it's very responsive it's very usable I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on the touch screen because I know most people are not going to use it but this can work independently of any software if you needed it to if you've had a bunch of designs that you've already got made and you're using it in some sort of commercial uh, situation where all you have to do is go to the file and hit start and you know you're doing production work you don't even need to have it hooked up to a computer that touchscreen works really well uh, and I've seen lots of people demonstrating it and using it so that's the only reason really why I'm doing this video and of course uh, you know, Jill is a friend of mine that I've known for a few years, and I wanted to give this laser a shot. Uh, other than that, I'm only going to be doing new and different lasers from now on. So let's get started, and I'm not going to do the unboxing of it because it's 99% assembled already. As soon as you open the box, all you do is put the gantry on, put in a couple bolts, and you're ready to go. So uh, let's jump over and take a look at what some of the testing start to finish that I did on this and then you can make up your own mind whether you like this or not. Alright so I've got the uh, Algo Laser Delta all assembled. The only problem that I ran into, well it assembles in the box. It comes 99% assembled and really all you have to do uh, you leave it in the box, you pick up the gantry, you put it onto the laser and put in a couple of screws that hold it in place and then you remove the whole thing from the box really simple assembly the problem that I ran into were the uh, cables on the Y are very stiff and uh, when it was packaged in the box those cables were bent in a way where they would not seat in that little channel that's up in the top left corner so that the laser could ride all the way to the top of the Y they would get hung up and and they would go underneath that channel instead of on top of it what I did was I clipped off the zip ties and I bent them back into place and uh, relocated the, the airline so that it would be on the right side of it and put some new zip ties on and now I can move it freely by hand all the way up on the Y and all the way back and that's working fine. Uh, one little problem on the assembly and now I'm going to do the first test. So if we switch over to Lightburn real quick and we take a look here in Lightburn in the device setting you'll see that this is 440 by 415 so what I'm going to do is grab a rectangle and I'm going to size it to that size 440 by 415 and then I'm going to put it directly in the center so that it fits perfectly on the work bed and then uh, what I'm going to do now is go turn the laser on let it home and I'm going to hit frame I've already set up uh, all of my settings in the device settings so it's ready to go so um, I'm gonna walk over to the laser now turn it on and then we're gonna frame this and see if it in fact does use the entire work bed and uh, I can tell you that a lot of lasers don't uh, before I do that I just want to cover one other thing I did take that little air assist module on the bottom left of your screen there and I uh, put a little bit of double-sided tape on the back of it and I stuck it to the frame because it kind of moves all over the place by itself it was falling off the table so that's a good spot for it right there it doesn't get in the way of the gantry so now I'm gonna walk over there and I'm gonna turn the machine on So now you can see that uh, it's turned on, it's communicating, connected in the console. I don't know why this is scrolling. It, this should only do that if you have show all turned on. 
Um, I did report this to uh, Jill at LBX in Illinois when we met over there. But if you wanted to see the specific commands, you could just type dollar dollar, press enter, and then scroll up really quickly. And the only thing that I'm interested in seeing here is the dollar one ten and dollar one eleven, which shows me that it can operate at thirty thousand millimeters per minute on both the X and the Y. So with that said, I'm going to come over here and I've already drawn out my 440 by 415 and I'm going to hit frame and we're going to see what happens. Hopefully it's not going to hit any end stops. So here we go. And that is something that I've noticed is that it does um, turn on the fan and it's quite loud. And there you go, you see that we can use the entire 440 by 415 area, work area. So that's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, I can also move this by hand in Lightburn. So if I come to the map icon and move it to the center, you'll see that it moves fine to the center. And then if we uh, click way up here, it's moving just just perfectly and if I click down here we've got the same thing so it's working well everywhere and then I'll just hit the uh, home button real quick and there you see is that painfully slow homing <laughs> but that's okay uh, I can I can put up with that so now we know that everything's working properly and this is the most important part to me is you know the initial startup is everything working properly I've gone ahead and put a honeycomb bed in there with a metal plate an aluminum plate under it I don't want to burn up my fireproof plywood there so I'm just going to use the honeycomb bed for this and some absolute positioning and we'll start running some tests and see how everything goes so one of the features that I think is new and noteworthy is the way that this module focuses so uh, on the side here there's a lever that you release or actually uh, let's release it and raise it up a little bit like that and then over here there's a slide and I don't know if my hand is in the way or if I've got enough lighting here you push that slide all the way down like that so now the slide is down and we're ready to focus it's way down here all we do is release this let this drop down to the material like so and then lock it again and now we're done if we press the button on the side there's a little button right here we press that button it automatically retracts that pin to focus and now it's in perfect focus so you don't have to worry about focusing the machine using a focusing tool losing a focus tool uh, or anything else everything is built right here into the side of the module that is something that is new and different and is probably I would uh, have to say one of the best features I've seen uh, absolutely the best focusing tool if you're going to be doing manual focus on a laser all right so uh, I started the engraving and I had to stop it <laughs> because it just uh, was a lot more powerful. What I did was I took the um, Atomstack A20 Pro setting because I happen to have a test card on hand from it and I used the same exact settings 8,000 millimeters a minute, 100% power, uh, 15 power on the grayscale, 100% max 15 min and this was the exact same setting as <laughs> as the uh, A20 Pro. So I wound up having to stop this job just because, you know, there was no sense in going any further. If you look at how clean the text came out, it came out perfect. And if you look on the right side there, that is 50% uh, power. So it's power scaled. This image was power scaled. And it was the same exact image that I ran on the A20 Pro. This machine is running a lot hotter, a lot darker. As you can see by the text, the, uh, the Delta has a nice black look to it, while the A20 Pro had 
a brownish look to it. All right, so uh, I'm looking at the, I ran another test card. This time I doubled the speed. Let me show you. So here's the second test card. And I changed the speed to 16,000 millimeters per minute. If you take a look at the A20 side by side, look at the difference in the detail on these engravings. It's absolutely amazing. Um, well, I never really liked the A20 that much anyway, so, but let's take a look side by side like this and look at the difference in those engravings. The amount of detail that came through on the uh, on the Delta. This is an awesome test card run at twice the speed of the 20 watt uh, Atom stack and just amazing results. Uh, I am very happy with the image quality on this. I'll run a couple of more tests and uh, then I'll do some cut tests. So I'm gonna go and run some more tests off camera I'll take some video of it and then I'll come in uh, voiceover on the video. All right, so uh, <laughs> I said to myself, wait a minute, I've got a 22 watt over there. I've got a 20 watt behind me. Let's just run the same <laughs> test on both of them and see what the difference is. And not surprisingly, the uh, Lasermatic did a slightly better job slightly better um, you could say that it's exactly the same but the laser matic is a little darker the engraving the uh, text and the cutting is slightly better so the laser matic cut through at 77.8 uh, 77.8 power and 800 millimeters per minute and the highest speed on the algo laser 22 watt was 800 millimeters per minute 83.3 so there is a side by side comparison of the lasermatic mk2 and the algo laser 22 watt keep in mind that this is the exact same file i just ran it i, I just turned this laser on behind me ran the job then I went right straight over to that one and ran it on, on the uh, Algo Laser. So the 20 watt MK2 seems to be slightly more powerful than the Algo Laser 22 watt. So um, 20 watt versus 22 watt, 20 watt wins. I, I really didn't doubt that. That is uh, so much for the cut test. So uh, it did do a good job on the cut test. I'm going to say that. It looks like a 20 watt but uh, it didn't beat the laser matic and there's just one more thing that I wanted to point out on the back side of this and there you can see that they both have about the same uh, cutting ability on the X and the Y so they're about exactly the same there's a slight difference on that second row down but not much the one on your <laughs> let me see the one on your left is going to be the alga laser and the one on your right is the lasermatic mk2 so the back side of this is uh similarly the same or almost the same anyhow uh, you can virtually call this the same even though that's 22 watts this is 20 watts this one did slightly better so i'm going to call it a draw I'm going to say that they're both about exactly the same. Okay, so since I did a side-by-side -side comparison on the cut test with the Lasermatic, I guess I should do the same with the engraving test. <laughs> and I'm also trying to save on material here. So uh, I've gone ahead and started that cut test. I mean the, the engraving test. <laughs> I'm expecting virtually the same results when this is finished so uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you know th they're gonna be virtually the same and we really don't have to go too much further with this video so let's uh, let this job finish now and we'll uh, come back and see what the results are in just a moment
So I'll do this off camera to save some time and we'll be right back with the results. Okay, I'm back and I have the results. Um, the Lasermatic definitely wins on this one. Although, again, they are, the results are very similar. Um, if you take a look, let's see if I can get this to focus right. So, uh, this is the laser, let's see. <laughs> this is the Lasermatic on this side, and this over here is the uh, Algo Laser. The results are pretty much about the same. I don't see too much of a difference, although the Lasermatic is a darker black. So you get better blacks out of the Lasermatic than you get out of the Algo Laser. But still, all in all, that's, that's a pretty good test pattern there. Uh, really good gradient all the way up. We could actually raise this speed up quite a bit. Um, probably, I would say, um, I would say that uh, I would probably uh, increase the uh, steps of the speed in order to get a, a better gradient there. But both of them came out really good. So, uh, you know, there, there you go. Okay, so uh, now I am running the Vintage World Map. Um, this is just a map that I ran on the IKEA K1, the 36 watt. And let me show you real quick. So um, this is the Vintage World map on the IKEA K1. And I've taken all my settings now. The IKEA goes faster, 48,000 instead of 30. I did this one 48,100. So if we take a look at um, Lightburn now real quick, I've changed the settings on this to 30,000 and 80% power instead of uh, what did I have here? 48,100. These are both being done in Atkinson at 275 LPI. We're gonna run, I'm gonna run this job now, and then what I'll do, I know you can't see it. <laughs> I'm not set up with the cameras to do this really well because I've got that enclosure covering it, and uh, it's very dark inside of there. So I've even put a light on top, still can't really see it well but when it's finished we'll take a look at it and see how it came out so I'll go ahead and speed this video up now and we'll uh, take a look at the finished product Uh, I'm going to jump in here for a minute and just make an observation. Uh, if you look at the lines on either side, they're a little bit squiggly and they're supposed to be perfectly straight. So I'm guessing that maybe there's a little bit of belt climb going on. It looks like it's straightened out now the further it gets up. But uh, I'm going to have to check that belt tension on the uh, X and find out if that needs any adjusting because those lines should be straight. Okay, so I am noticing something very strange here. I tried to duplicate the IKEA settings, the 36 watt, and I ran this job at 30,000 millimeters per minute. So the IKEA took 
38 minutes and one second to complete the job. And I checked my clock when I started this job and 38 minutes later would be eight. It's right now it's 819. So 38 minutes later would have been 826. And it's 819. <laughs> so something is wrong there. Um, this job is finishing five minutes faster than the IKEA 36 watt did. And I was running that one at 48,000 millimeters per minute. I'm running this one at 30,000 millimeters per minute. So that tells me that IKEA is fudging on their numbers. Uh, it really did not run 48,000 millimeters per minute. And as a matter of fact, uh, it was probably closer to, uh, I'm at 30,000 on this. And I've still got six minutes left. So this job is going to finish about five minutes faster than the IKEA did. So IKEA was fudging on their numbers when they said it's running 48,000 millimeters per minute. Uh, or that that was its max speed. Because this job is finishing faster than the IKEA did. So I hope you understand that. I hope I made that clear. There is still uh, like four minutes left. Uh, and this, this job is finishing faster so uh, it's just about done I used the cut setting for the lasermatic 20 it looks like it's perfect and uh, I'm gonna go over and get this job off the laser now okay so I've got it off the laser there it is Pretty nice job. Uh, I checked the tension on the belts and uh, the belts didn't seem to need any attention on the X. But if you look at these side by side and one of them, the, the one that I did was at 80% power. The IKEA was at 100% power. And it looks like they both ran about the same speed but you can see that the line on the IKEA came out straight, perfectly straight. And the line over here did not so I'm not sure that this can run uh, that top speed this is and you can see I have the numbers on here 38 minutes and one second this one took uh, 37 minutes about 37 minutes and but I didn't have the power all the way up on this one that's why it looks a little bit worse uh, this one looks a little better only because the power was a hundred percent so I'm thinking that these two were probably even though there was 18,000 uh, millimeter per minute discrepancy here I think this one ran at about 30 so um, yeah that's that's a, a revelation right there but I'm not so sure that it can handle the top speed like what you see on these it is slightly skewed on those lines so on, on the Y, a little bit skewed. There was nothing wrong with the belt tension. And I'll show you real quickly that these are my speeds right here. 30,000 millimeters per minute, 80% power. And we wound up with basically the same. If I had bumped this up to 100%, it would look exactly the same. And other than that, I don't see a big difference between these two. Not a big difference at all. Nothing else in the image is skewed except for those two lines on the edge. Uh, if you look at the ribbon in the top corner here, you'll see that it came out perfect. The text came out good. There's no problem with any of that. So yeah, uh, I think IKEA gave me some funny numbers. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it came out really good. But um, all in all, you know, uh, there's really no reason the, the tests that I've done so far put this in uh, the higher level category as compared to like the Atom Stack A20 and the Sculpt Fun S30 and things like that. Uh, I've tested all of them from uh, 20 watts all the way up to 40 watts and everything in between. 
and I would put this one I would put this one probably as number one for an open style gantry system uh, of course the lasermatic is quite different because you know it's all in one it's a precision unit unit so it's it's a completely different laser if you're going to be getting an open style gantry system and if you need to have that touch screen which some of you may need to have that you know if you're running repetitive production work you know it's as easy as hitting start 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 uh setting up a jig and doing it that way but um i'm going to put this in the top i'm going to say this is better than the Acer 36 watt this is better than it's better than all of them the ikea 36 watt uh anything in the 20 to 40 watt range this one comes out on top uh obviously except for the comparison to the lasermatic but uh you know that's partially bias and partially that i like the blacker burn at lower speeds and powers so uh, and it's really precision you don't have to worry about fidgeting around on the work bed to get your work lined up this is all done in absolute coordinates uh, i did use absolute coordinates on that too but there was a lot of framing involved so um again if you're looking for an open style gantry system uh, and comparing this to the other ones out there I'm gonna say that this one ranks up in the top I am a little disappointed by IKEA saying that they had a whatever it was 46,000 millimeter per minute machine machine and this one finished faster the same exact job I mean I'm, I'm a little uh, disappointed by that um, and I guess I have to go back and make a comment on that but uh, like I said this one rates up at the top I'm not going to go through all the testing it takes a lot of time a lot of material I've already done about eight other tests off camera and this thing performed flawlessly now the good so the good is you got the touch screen you got the automatic air assist I do like the fact that you're able to control that air assist with the up and down button to go from 10 to 100 percent that is a great feature is this the best new laser on the market no it's definitely not that is the one behind me but uh it is the best open style gantry laser that i've found in the diodes so far so uh, i'm gonna put it that way uh, another good thing is that touch screen again if you're doing production work that touchscreen is invaluable. I love the fact that I was able to upgrade the firmware just by tapping on the touchscreen and it upgraded perfectly. Uh, I do like the Wi-Fi setup on the touchscreen. So you can, uh, it'll find your, your router and then you just put in your password and it's connected. So that's another great feature. So you can work in Wi-Fi or you can work um, from the SD card. So there are a lot of good features about this. You have that little light that lens, uh, little light that lights up when the lens gets dirty. That's a very nice feature. Like you saw when I did the review on the Creality Falcon, it had the same thing. And uh, but I believe these are all these modules are all from the same uh, factory. They're just all slightly different, and I think they're just slightly different frequencies as well, which is why you saw the. The darker black that I got off of the one behind me but uh, lots of great features the things that I don't like about it is that it's a really large machine <laughs> and I know that Algo Laser is coming out with their own um, uh, their own cover for it to fit it but uh, at the current time I have seven different um, enclosures here for the laser and none of them fitted i had to take one apart just to get it down over the front a little bit and i used a uh an air purifier a high powered air purifier with that with the front cover open it worked well so um you won't you'll have to either one build your own enclosure or two uh, buy the custom enclosure from algo laser when it comes out so that's one thing I didn't like. I, I wasn't happy having to reroute the wires right straight out of the box because they weren't falling straight into that channel. But that wasn't a that's not a big deal. Um, you know, it's not going to make this laser a non-starter. It's just was just a matter of snipping the zip ties and and repositioning them and bending them so that they would they would lay properly when it moved up on the Y. Um, 
other than that it's got all the standard features uh you know there there's nothing really super new here uh, i'm not uh, i'm not a fanboy <laughs> Uh, uh, when somebody gives me a laser for free to do a review on, I don't go crazy and say this is the best new laser of 2023 or anything like that because, you know, um, I have my own opinions and I'm not a salesman for the company. So um, I'm just going to tell you like it is. And, and like I said, I think this is top tier. So uh, if you're looking for an open gantry style laser, I would put this one at the top of my list over the Acer, over the Ikea, over all of the other 20 watt and above lasers. Uh, this one coming in at 22 watts. So um, not to leave anything out, let's take a quick look at their website. Uh, I just wanted to run down some of the things to make sure that I don't miss anything here. So <laughs> the engraving speed is 500 millimeters uh, a second. Um, you can do everything from the touch screen, which is nice. The working size, 440 by 415, which is probably, I think, the largest uh, diode laser working size that there is on the market today. The uh, We already discussed the air assist. It's all one plug that plugs directly into the uh, machine, so it makes it easy to use. There's no extra power cords or anything like that. Uh, over here, there they have a closed-loop belt. Uh, which pretty much means that it's permanently affixed inside these teeth right here. And um, second, cost optical technology. All right, <laughs> adopting the uh, advanced second generation COS technology, the polarized beam combination improves the performance by about 40%. So, uh, yeah, we did see that it, it is not a perfect square it is slightly rectangular not not by much just slightly it is the technology I'm just gonna say that this is the technology that comes from that particular factory for the modules which several manufacturers already have um, the spot size uh, 0 0.05 by 0 0.6 I, I'm gonna say that's probably not right it's probably closer to about 0 0.1 by 0 0.15 something like that uh, but I didn't get out the microscope uh, to take a look at it. 500 shades of color. Yes, it can. It's 22 watts. It can do different shades of color on certain metals, but that's going to be very slow. It's probably not something that you, you're going to want to do. And this is 30 millimeter pine. One pass. I didn't have any luck with that at one pass. Uh, I used uh, 25 millimeter, I think it was, one inch pine and I got some burning on one pass so uh, I did wind up ha having to up the passes and I had to uh, lower the power to keep it from catching on fire so <laughs> it definitely was not one pass not not for me anyway not for the pine that I had the speed is a is an important feature uh, it's if it's important to you it's important to you I don't know what to say uh, the one thing that I, I did notice is that it does have 5G Wi-Fi. So that is very nice. And that touchscreen has its own dedicated processor. So, uh, you know, that, that's a great thing. That touchscreen is very, very responsive. It is a four-core dual CPU uh, control board. The focusing accuracy on this is probably best in the industry. <laughs> that I've seen so far I mean the only way that you can beat this focusing gauge uh, would be uh, with LiDAR so which we haven't seen yet uh, I think the the X2S one has the LiDAR um, but that's a whole different class of machine so uh, the laser lens is integrated with the air assist nozzle um, you know this is all just standard sales uh, stuff that you see here it does have the nylon rollers though and that is important because those last two to three times as long as the old style rollers so just to cover the uh, safety features on this it does have the tilt if you and you can set the amount of tilt before it triggers it uh, it, it does have the fire alert over here you've got your 
emergency stop you've got your key one thing I like about this is that you can remove the key and throw it away <laughs> in my case that's what I do because if I remove the key I'm gonna lose it so I just put it to the on position and leave it like that well, you got the emergency stop button there so uh, everything is uh, pretty much plug-and-play on this works really well and again like I said earlier I didn't cover the assembly so in here you've got the gantry is the only thing that you need to attach everything else is already attached so you just pull this out of its slot and mount it with a couple of screws and you're you're good to go you can pull the whole thing out of the box everything assembles right in the box and that's really uh, about it covering the website itself um, so that's about it <laughs> Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.